Angeles County School Superintendent Corey Wise is fighting back against the district. The termination was without cause. And when you look at the reasoning, I think there is a plan. We sit down with sure. Wise as a new legal complaint filed against the district. Plus, a project to revitalize Denver's 16th Street Mall is underway. The renovation of 16th Street Mall is reinfusing vibrancy and life into the center of our city. I just have a quick question. We begin with breaking news at five. A small wildfire has caused mandatory evacuations near Woodland Park in Southern Colorado. Now these are pictures from Teller County Sheriff's Office of the Mills Ranch Road Fire. It's burning about three to five acres right now. Areas north of the road now are being evacuated. And this is just one of several fires actually we've seen pop up just the last two hours. Jefferson County crews stopped a wildfire at three quarters of an acre. That was just east of Conifer. So let's send it over to our chief meteorologist Mike Nelson. And Mike, the winds are a problem tonight. Uh, once again, just whipping across the front range. 44 miles an hour at Broomfield right now up in Kenosha Pass. 28, 23 at Berthet Pass and 38 at DIA. This is what it looks like in time lapse. You can see those winds whipping off of the mountains, but they're dry winds down here in the high country there has been some snow that's been accompanied with these strong gusty winds this afternoon but down here we haven't had much moisture at all for a couple of weeks and that is the real problem so on radar the fire weather warnings continue until seven o'clock tonight there's a little snow up in the mountains but no moisture on the plains i do have some better news heading into the weekend it does look like those winds will lighten up a little all right, we'll talk more later. Thank you, Mike. The State Board of Education has been meeting all day long to decide on what happens next with the Adams 14 School District. Now, following years of poor performance, the board could reorganize the entire district or even close Adams City School. Denver 7's Micah Smith has been listening on, into this meeting all day long. And Micah, this would be a first of its kind decision if reorganization happens. And in Shannon, it would. But I can tell you at this point in the meeting, that does not seem to be the direction that the board is leaning in. After a marathon morning, just before recess at 3 p.m., board members went around the room and gave their opinions on what they think should happen next with the district. Now, all the board members agreed. They do not think that one Adams 14 school should be closed. But the full board's agreement ended there. At least two board members felt Adams 14 should lose accreditation. One said they thought reorganization or an outside management takeover might be warranted, but most board members said they believe a partial partnership with an outside firm picked by the district would be sufficient. There's a problem here and it needs to be solved now. I've watched it for uh, since 1998. Since 1998 and it hasn't changed. Now, during that one hour recess, we caught up with one mom in the crowd who took the day off of work to watch these proceedings. She told me she was very upset when she heard state school board members discuss the history of problems within Adams 14 without talking about the role that the state has played. Where were they 10 years ago? OK, they, they have not been around here. They don't know our community. It's clear by their decisions or their words that one, they do not reflect our community. Now between the state school board, the Adams 14 school board and the crowd itself, there are a lot of opinions happening inside of that room, but all agree that improvement improvements do need to be made to Adams 14. And at the heart of all of this are Commerce City kids who just want to go to school every day and get a good education. Reporting live, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Yeah, that's right. That is the bottom line. Our kids. All right. Thank you, Micah. And just yesterday, we took a 360 view on the future of the Adams 14 school district, and you can find that story right now on Denver 7 Plus for your streaming device. Today, attorneys representing former Douglas County School Superintendent Corey Wise filed a charge against the district alleging discrimination in his firing. And today, for the first time since he was fired on February 4th, Wise spoke publicly about his dramatic dismissal. I met with Wise at his Denver attorney's office, and he told me he was blindsided when two of the four newly elected school board members met with him in January and told him, quit or be fired. Well, he didn't quit, and he was voted out of his job a week later in a highly charged special board meeting. You're flipped upside down, and you, you lose sleep, you stress, uh, you have the gamut of grief, uh, um, you know, anger, depression, um, everything. The charge filed today with the EEOC and State Civil Rights Division claims Wise was fired unlawfully citing discrimination, that he was fired because of his advocacy for LGBTQ plus students, youth of color, 
and disabled students at risk from severe COVID because of his support for the school district's equity policy and mask mandate. Four board members who now make up the majority were elected in November on their opposition to both. They claim they just wanted to take the district in a different direction. Now we'll have a lot more of my interview with Corey Wise on Denver 7 News at 6 and 10. Also, Wise just announced what his new job will be. We'll have that for you coming up. A chase of a domestic violence suspect in Larimer County led deputies to a landfill this afternoon. The sheriff's office says their deputies shot that suspect. No deputies were injured and there are no new updates right now on the condition of that suspect. At last check, the landfill was still closed off. Wheat Ridge police officer Alan Fisher was released from the hospital today with his colleagues lining the walkways. He was wheeled out. Fisher was stabbed multiple times early yesterday morning during a traffic stop. Now Fisher's recovery will take some time. However, the department says he's in good spirits. 29 year old Andre Young was arrested for attempted murder. Aurora's Department of Public Safety met today to discuss the lengthy records backlog that Denver 7 investigates first reported last week. The department says they have decreased the backlog from 2500 crime reports to about 400. Now, those crime reports included murder, child sex abuse, carjacking. The department says they didn't keep track of what remote workers were doing while working at home. 16th Street in Denver is changing and today the city of Denver celebrated the start of renovations. Mayor Hancock was joined by members of the downtown Denver partnership to break ground on the project. It will improve the infrastructure on the mall from Market Street to Broadway and it should be finished by 2024. With details on that project, here is Denver 7's Colette Bordelon. The question of the day. What makes the 16th Street Mall? Wine and dine, sports, I think it has it all. Answers found in the shops and food along the street. It's pretty much the heart of Denver. It's where all the action is. But inside the stores are the people who make the place. Tiwi Tay is a woman-owned company. Taylor Odoricio is one of five entrepreneurs who are the future of a few vacant storefronts. So we have a basically wall installation that'll be on this back wall. She's part of Pop Up Denver, where businesses like hers are being funded by the Downtown Denver Partnership to set up shop for at least three months. The goal is for them to stay. It's really cool that our brand gets to be down here to help encourage and revitalize the 16th Street Mall. Three. We met with Taylor on the same day the city broke ground on multi-million dollar renovations for the mall, a plan that's been in the works for more than a decade. Well, one more reason to come back, love their city, take pride in their city. Renderings of the finished product seen through virtual reality goggles. Oh! <laughs> Showing more trees, wider sidewalks, and more space for people to gather. Having more eyes on the street, that, I think, is what helps create a vibrant and exciting space for people. But even as the mayor was presenting the plan. We hear you, ma'am. Thank you. But we're doing something for the whole city. Thank you. A woman yelled at him, angry at how the city has handled the homeless population. I certainly have seen quite a bit of homelessness and uh, a little bit of drug use. We asked what the renovations would do about that. Bringing positivity, bringing activity, all of those things build a better place. Basically saying more business and foot traffic brings a different energy. I think it's community. It's something that you share with loved ones and your friends. One that Odoricio is excited to share at her new store this summer. And that was Colette Bordelon reporting in. While all of this construction is happening, those with the city say the 80 plus businesses will still be open. They are hoping that people will keep coming. In fact, there's an app you can download on your phone. It's called the 16th Street Mall Project, which has real time construction updates and information on which businesses are open and at what times. The wild winds and the high fire danger just won't give up. I'll let you know if there's any relief as we head into the weekend. Turning around a low performing school isn't impossible. Restorative approach is based on relationships. But it takes some rethinking about what the learning experience is made of. We're gonna teach and reteach these kids those skills that are missing and the school grounds. Plus, Colorado's new power couple is settling into our state. We have a look at the record-breaking property they just bought. 